And it's right against is your all in silhouette. So this will okay. be thank you so much. Thank you. You, you thank just you. don't think you're good enough. <laughs> you can do it. So what ends up happening is that you end up living by default. You take whatever comes your way. And that's what was going on with me. And this is what happened. What broke me was the mess of violence. It broke me. I wanted to do ministry, but I was in love. I wanted to satisfy everybody. So I ended up being a victim of domestic violence. And this is what happens to you when you experience domestic violence. When someone is beating you upside your head, you, you hide in your mind. You find a safe place in your, in your mind. So my safe place was visions and dreams and uh, the music to the orchestra. I, I, I hid there. I hid there. And then this last episode that brought me was, um, he hit me so hard. It's in his book. He hit me so hard. Blush came out of my head. I slipped down the wall. I slipped into a safe place, which was my grandmother's house. So I slipped into that place, you see this book, and I was safe there. And we went into each room. I slipped into the, to that safe place, and we went to go into all the rooms in the house, just talking about forgiveness, my grandfather was there. That's what you do to survive. When you've been getting beat up by life, by others, you're going to find a place to hide. Until you decide, you know what, I'm not gonna do this anymore. So what we end up doing is keep delaying, delaying, delaying our passions, delaying our journeys. We just keep delaying. And we just keep taking bruises and beats. So finally, I decided to take my journey and I broke free. I was, I lost my voice. I didn't speak for about six years. I was walking around, trying to talk to I walked around the south. I didn't tell anybody. And this little girl right here, my granddaughter, and my niece, 
police challenged me to, let's go out and party. So, I went mean, night <laughs> to the club. But I still couldn't function. I was so, I knew I'm, I'm always writing, so I, was, I started writing TV segments about whatever thing I saw on the map. So I started writing. So I put something that in my pocket. So one day I was cleaning up and getting ready for work, and I heard this radio announcement saying, "If you want to start your own radio show, call blah blah blah." I said, well, "Okay, right." So, <laughs> so I dug my pocket, and that that was there. Because I wrote that I want some own radio show, my own TV show. That's how I thought it. I heard that voice. I said, "You know what? I'm not fighting this anymore. I'm tired of getting beat up. I decided to start speaking." When I woke up out of my misery from the rest of the bottom, I was speaking on the radio show. I was telling everybody about it. I didn't know it was going to come out. I was going to scream and holler crying on the radio. The whole world heard my cry. From London to Africa, they, were, they heard me crying on the radio. I told them. I'm speaking because I was a victim of domestic violence. And I'm telling you, when you have things that that's on you, your passion. You have to fight to survive. You have to fight, 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 fight. So I took the journey through the narrow gate. How many of you are willing to take the journey through the narrow gate to, to live your passion? You might want to be an uh, artist, a scientist, or, uh, or whatever. It's just, just, I want to be just from living on the beach. <laughs> but, but again, this is what the journey is all about. Has anyone read the book besides Alina? Uh, so, Alina, what is your favorite chapter? Uh, Children. Let's talk about mm -hmm. what is the children going through the world right now. I can relate to that as a model. And uh, I like the entire book because I can relate some of the things experience you had because it happens to my life too. So what so what happened was, I'm not gonna take my time, what happened was I started having lots of dreams. Doing this domestic violence thing. I started having visions and dreams. Visions and dreams. I had it when I was a little girl, but it's all becoming more profound. I would dream about children. Any given night, I would dream about me rescuing children, uh, saving children. I could just walk by a child and see them hurting or him. I could just feel a child. So, of course, I'm going to write a chapter about children. So, I'm going to take a little bit of time to read about children. Do, do you mind? The children. Since that little made me cry because she read it on the, she made a YouTube. Yes, actually, I broadcast life to the world, actually, you know, um, about because I like it so much in the, in the children chapter two. Even though I have my wonderful Brazilian accent, you know, um, a little different charming, I would say, my trademark. Anyway, so I, I like it so much that I decided to go to cast the board. So I, you know, I think the, the whole, you know, I put in YouTube afterwards, but it is actually, it was live to the whole entire world. So I'm going to take a few minutes, the chapter small, to read a little bit about the children. Now, I'm on my journey, having visions and dreams, and there's an angel that's walking with me through this, my journey. I'm looking for a pearl. Leaving the burning embers behind me, but recognizing the riches of my memories, I felt that this past wasn't that bad after all. I was thinking today is going to be the day that I find my pearl. Oh my goodness, another gate was in front of me. I was a bit annoyed. Another gate, I sighed as I opened the gate. Lo and behold, a group of children. Twelve, they greeted me. I thought about my children's ministry, Vision of Pearls International. The name of the ministry was inspired by the title of a song called String of Pearls by Michael Franks. For years, I continued to have dreams of rescuing children on any given night. So I was not surprised that I am face to face with them at this narrow gate. My heart started to beat quickly because the thoughts of our ch troubled teens and the disconnected parents and teens came to mind. The real bird lines was all I could say about this serious issue. There was a lack of connection. No threads, no pearls. My mind was racing. Troubled teens. It's normal to be tempted to turn away from a teen and say, oh, it's not my problem. But you never know. It could be your cousin, your nephew. It could be anybody. Yet parents have more power over their teens and situations than they give themselves credit for. Keeping a 
strong connection of the teens and understand the time and culture that we're in are the keys to connecting to the straight line. I remember writing a segment on teen characters for television, and in my secret, in my research, I learned that an approach often used by therapists to view a situation or teen behavior is to use a technique called reframing. Reframing. In this shift of perspective, you have to look at things in a different angle. We can't go back to how we used to be because things have changed. We have to realize what triggered them. Some parents and teens can get unstuck simply by looking at the situation with new eyes. You have to take on some new eyes. So I decided to speak to my babies, give them love, because I just wanted to rescue them all and keep them safe. One of the children said to me, you have compassion and a heart for God's children. So our father has granted us a day to spend with you. I was truly happy and everything was going great. We spent the day together with my favorite things, like a lot of school, Dr. Seuss books, <laughs> <laughs> candy apples, <laughs> and a merry-go-round, <laughs> and a Ferris wheel. So we spent the whole day together. But then it was time to pass to go. Time was passing, and I wanted to see the end of my path. I gathered the children and led them across the bridge. An angel awaited to greet them. They waved goodbye to me with sweet smiles on their faces and tears rolled down my face. I reflected on some of the dreams that I had about children and a children to my body. I thought about my perfect childhood 